This short video is designed as a quick review for just-in-time learning before performing an auxiliary brachial plexus block. It features one of our resident trainees performing the block in real time. Abduct and externally rotate the patient's arm to 90 degrees and place the probe in the transverse orientation over the auxiliary artery. Slide the probe proximally to contact the pectoral fold and to visualize the artery lying on the conjoint tendon. If you see the glenohumeral joint instead, the probe is too proximal. The radial nerve has a reputation as difficult to visualize, but it always lies on the conjoint tendon next to the artery. It is larger than the other nerves and always has a vague outline until local anesthetic is injected around it. The median nerve is always adjacent to the coracobrachialis muscle. The ulnar nerve is always superficial to the radial nerve and posterior to the artery. Tilt the probe as needed to optimize visibility of the arterial wall fascial planes and the nerves. The muscular cutaneous nerve location is variable and is identified as a sliding structure within the coracobrachialis muscle. I currently favor an approach that targets median, radial, and ulnar nerve in the same pass. Infiltrate the skin insertion site with local anesthetic. Angle the block needle steeply to puncture the skin in investing fascia, then flatten to advance through the coracobrachialis muscle towards the median nerve. Depending on its position relative to the artery, aim to pass either superficial to the nerve or, as in this case, between the nerve and the artery. Inject half mil boluses of local anesthetic to hydrodissect a safe path between nerve and artery. Advance along this hydrodissection path into the vicinity of the ulnar nerve. And then depress the needle tip to pass over the artery and the radial nerve and to pierce the fascial roof of the radial nerve compartment. Press forward with constant controlled pressure until you feel a tactile fascial pop and see a visual recoil of fascia, signaling that the fascia has been pierced. Perform a test injection and observe spread within the radial nerve compartment. One trick I recommend is to rotate the needle bevel to face downwards and backwards. And this will promote spread towards the nerve rather than away from it. The radial nerve is in the shadow of the needle, so slide the probe away from the needle to visualize the nerve better and to see that local anesthetic spread is filling the compartment and outlining the nerve. After injecting 8 to 10 mils here, withdraw the needle back into the ulnar nerve compartment and inject 5 to 8 mils here to surround the ulnar nerve. Advance the needle as necessary to pierce any fascial sheaths that might be impeding spread around the ulnar nerve. Once ulnar nerve injection is complete, withdraw the needle into the vicinity of the median nerve and inject another 5 to 8 mils in total, repositioning the tip if necessary to obtain spread that surrounds the median nerve. With the median nerve injection complete, 
manipulate the probe to clearly visualize and identify the musculocutaneous nerve. Withdraw the needle into the subcutaneous tissue and insert at an appropriately steep angle to pierce the fascial envelope, taking care to avoid the nerve itself. Use a separate skin puncture site if necessary and track the needle tip by its motion through the muscle. When piercing the fascial layer, the needle will inevitably go through and through with a tactile and visual pop. Once this has been seen, withdraw the needle slowly while simultaneously injecting very slowly. And once the needle tip re-enters the fascial space, it will distend and local anesthetic will surround the nerve. Finish the injection here with approximately 5 mils of local anesthetic. For more details and other tips and tricks for performing auxiliary blocks, see the longer videos elsewhere on the channel.